My name is uh, Samir Parmar and I am an application engineer for the Machine Vision Group at SecUSA. Now that you have already viewed the first part of the video uh, that had to do with connecting to the 2D and 3D smart camera, we can now go ahead and see how we can actually acquire images into these 2D and 3D cameras. So you can see that right now I have my 2D and my 3D camera connected. For the 2D camera I can merely go ahead and double click on it and look at the live view so what we see right now is I have uh, two post-it notes and we can clearly see that one is dark one is sort of bright the color differences or the grayscale differences can be visible and I can adjust my aperture on the camera itself I can adjust my focus and we can maneuver pretty much anything we want in the live view we can adjust for our exposure amount when we are using the ambient lighting as well as the gain and we need to remember these two numbers uh, in a second we will see why so that's how we can see the live image for the 3d camera on the other hand we cannot see the live image because of the methodology that was described earlier as far as how images are acquired uh, using a 3d camera so now we can go ahead and see uh, how we can move forward the next step would be basically to create a new product and you can see that uh, the new product is created over here a new product comprises of a program so I will call this 2D program it also comprises of a table and I will call this uh, merely my table and uh, it requires an association between a camera a program and a table these three things together combine a product to form a product there happens to be an already live image that is present from previous time in the camera memory but we can go ahead and acquire a new image so we need a step called grab setup in the grab setup we need to define our exposure time which I believe was about 9900 from the previous time that we saw the exposure time sliders in the live view and the gain was about 200 we can further configure if we have a trigger sensor to trigger the setup uh, and if we have some lighting that we are strobing once that's configured we can insert a step that's called grab and in order to execute steps we basically uh, press the F5 or the F8 button so if I press F8 it jumps from one step to the next and if I press F8 again it acquires a new image and puts that in the camera memory bank so you can see that I have the, my image banks on the top I also have my image banks on the side the side image banks are for preview purposes so they show you uh, before and after a step whereas these image banks are basically for storing the images that you acquire and then you can do further processing on them the table can be seen on the left hand side over here and the tools are all available on the top I will go ahead and shift gears um, I can create a new program and I will call this uh, 3d program I could have used the same program if I wanted and associated uh, that program uh, with my 3D camera but I just decided to create a new program and for the table I will associate the same table I had used with the 2D camera and you can see that the programming environment is identical the tools might be slightly different because they are accommodating 3D as opposed to 2D but everything else is identical so it should be fairly straightforward to basically move from, from one platform to another um, I have similarly a grab setup step and I have a grab step as well to acquire my image my grab setup however is different from what we saw in the 2D I can double click on the setup uh, and come into my interactive setup and uh, we, this is what it looks like on the extreme top this is what represents the camera the red trapezoid represents uh, what is the valid field of view the white represents what is the field of view that I am choosing so I can customize my field of view if I increase my height over here uh, we can see that that's what the slider is if I put my fingers over here you can kind of start seeing uh, a cross-sectional of my fingers basically so I will take those same post-it notes and I will uh, place those post-it notes um, on the uh, underneath the 3d camera so we can see a cross-sectional profile of them and uh, one thing that you might pay attention to now is that um, one of the post-it notes is actually higher than the other and that is visible using a 3d camera but it was not visible using a 2d camera so what you want to make sure is that uh, you don't have any pixels beneath 
this uh, the bottom of the slider because that's wasted pixels so I will go ahead and adjust my uh, field of view to accommodate for that uh, you want to make your field of view as tight as possible because that means that you have more cycle time available for your application uh, I can adjust for my measurement speed notice that I have this red right now which means that my image is overexposed I would like this to be uh, black uh, for an ideal image and I can do that by reducing the exposure amount so this reduces the laser exposure amount if I make that 99 as opposed to 100 you can kinda see the change as far as the sharpness starts showing up so 99 is usually a good setting for most of the application for exposure amount uh, and I will start increasing my profile rate and you will start that that also starts converting a lot of the red into black the other thing that we should be careful about is this missing data threshold it always starts at a 5 which is not a very good setting uh, if I start going to the right you start seeing that I lose a lot of the data uh, because it basically filters out or it considers that to be like a noise because this is some sort of a, like a confidence number as far as what the camera should accept as a good data and what it should reject as bad data but if I go all the way to the left it accepts everything which includes some noise maybe as well so usually uh, one or two is usually a good setting depending on the application we are looking at if I go for two you can start seeing some uh, we start missing uh, some good data over here so I will stick to one over here and uh, I will increase my uh, profile rate uh, sometimes you cannot do much about the overexposure if there is some slight overexposure that's fine you you know as long as you get a good quality image that's what our intent is profile triggering free running means that the profiles are acquired immediately one after another uh, the disadvantage of this is that if you have a variable speed what's gonna happen is that if your image moves if your object moves faster or slower now you're gonna start seeing an image that is shrinked or skewed uh, a better way to go about it is using encoder control which means that your profiles are going to be acquired based on the encoder pulses ensuring that they are equidistant and uh, this uh, currently counter value can uh, help you making sure whether your encoder is working or not so right now I'm moving my slider to and fro and I can see my pulses which means that my 5 volt TTL encoder has been connected properly to my camera I will come back to this one uh, just in a second I want to go in the advanced mo 